Good afternoon, everybody. Mm -hmm. Keith here. I wanted to talk to everybody today about uh, Social Security and FICA. You see that in your check stubs all the time. It's Federal Insurance Contributions Act. And the basic of the discussion in regards to Social Security administration payments, you see that taken out on your checks all the time. And then you also have um, the FICA, Federal Insurance Contributions Act. And they call that a tax. And they tell everybody that that's required. First of all, I want everybody to understand and realize, and you can call, this up, call them up and you can ask them, is Social Security a voluntary program? Is it a voluntary social program? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's voluntary. And then you can ask them if the uh, um, FICA, Federal Insurance Contributions Act, is required, if you're required to pay it. And this is the stipulation, people. Federal insurance. What it is, is when you apply for Social Security, you're applying for Social Security to administrate a, a uh, what's known as a foreign situs trust. And that's what your, what your name is on that Social Security card. That's your account access as trustee of that account. Now what happens is you're being considered as a government employee simply by opening that account. Then you turn around when you get a job, a J-O-B, you go out and you sign up on this thing known as an application. And nobody's ever using the right signatures, nobody's asking questions or anything. They're just filling out these W-2s, W-4s, and nine, uh, 1099s, uh, 1040s, and all that, and without no, even, no, even knowing what they're doing. 1040 tax forms are contrib uh, uh, contribution taxes, or contributions. Um, the FICA is federal insurance contribution. Um, the Social Security is a voluntary program. And, and it's all voluntary stuff that they've got you convinced that you're, it's mandatory to pay. I just got off the phone with, with one of the guys at the uh, Social Security Administration. I don't know where what call center I went to, but um, he was trying to convince me that uh, just because, uh, or, or tried tell, explaining to me that, well, even Wendy's uh, employees pay FICA, that that makes them a uh, government employee. I don't think so. Just because they pay a federal insurance contribution doesn't make them a government employee. And just because they sign up for a voluntary uh, social benefit program for retirement doesn't make them a government employee. Um, so I assure you what's going on is they're, they're assigning you as trustee of that account when you get that Social Security account. And as that, you're an a, uh, agent for a government account, and therefore you're a government employee. Um, either way you look at it, if you sign up for Social Security, you're then construed to be a government employee. If you pay FICA, then you're, you're uh, listed as a Medicare qualified government employee. And that's part of the problem. Because if Social Security is a voluntary, voluntary program and it's not disclosed that as a voluntary program, part of that volunteerism is that you're volunteering to be a government employee. It's not, it's not disclosed. Now, I don't know anybody that would be a volunteer to a government agency unless it was one of the soup, soup halls down the street or something. That way they know they're actually working on a voluntary basis. Rather than as opposed to being drugged into these damn courts mm -hmm. and being forced to perform without knowing that they're performing. And therefore, um, getting themselves in trouble. Jose 4. 
verse 6, my people shall perish for they lack knowledge. Understand the words that they're using against you people. And understand that these social programs, these medical programs, these, these uh, credit programs, they're all nothing but a distraction from the reality of the real things that you should be doing, which is taking upon your responsibilities instead of giving them up to everybody else. Instead of giving up your responsibility to educate your children, take it upon yourself to quit letting other people indoctrinate your children into believing that they have to pay Social Security and they have to pay FICA and they have to have a goddamn driver's license and they have to pay taxes at all. The only reason you would ever pay taxes is to help support a fictional uh, commercial system that isn't required. It's not required. It just makes things convenient for those that want convenience of modern technology. It makes it convenient to forward the value extrinsically from the past to the future so that we can live in the now with big fancy TVs. Hey, what's up, brother? I got my brother Andy joining me up again today. Okay. Um, when it comes to uh, not paying this stuff, first of all, we have to approach the employer. When the government a corporation under its arm, under its foot, has it has its foot on that corporation's throat and is telling it that it has to abide by certain regulations and that employer is going to do everything it, it does, um, it can do to abide by those regulations so that it can stay in business. That means they will also enforce Whoever the, whoever's got their foot on their throat telling them they have to pay Social Security and they have to pay FICA, they will, they will enforce that as well. And the problem is that FICA is only um, for government employees. Every government employee, instead of paying Social Security, they pay FICA. And this is the way it's supposed to work. As private people that go out and privately for worthy of their hire, every man is worthy of his hire, and in his private capacity, if he goes out and gets um, compensated for his labor or his services from a corporation on the private end, then he is not taxable. That includes what they call the FICA tax. Even though it's a federal insurance contribution, it cannot, it's like sovereign citizen. It cannot be a tax and a contribution at the same time. That's a misnomer. And so when we look at the Social Security and the, and the uh, FICA, if the government employee is required to pay the FICA as their insurance for retirement, for being a government employee, then the private man that's, that's the same thing as a private man paying into the Social Security or a private social retirement program when he gets, gets of age. That's the difference. So if you're a government, government employee, that's what the Federal uh, uh, Insurance Contribution Act is for. But in the meantime, if you think about this shit Obama was pulling, everybody's still required to have their own private insurance somehow. So it's, it's all bullshit. You just have to realize what the truth is. And when you find out the truth and you start pushing it, um, we find out the methods to enforce it. So at this point in time, you may not, um, I don't particularly myself um, know what forms to use to uh, uh, extricate the, the Social Security from your record, uh, as far as that's concerned, Jennifer. I, I don't know the exact form number, but I'm sure you can Google it. Um, I, I think it's uh, Social Security, just Google Social Security Disclaimer Form. 
I, I'm not sure if it's, I think it's GSA 636 or something. But Google that and that'll tell you exactly what it is. And then when it comes to making that disclaimer, you can either use the form that the Social Security Administration offers or you can use that as an offer and then amend it right on there, putting your own words on their own form as an amendment to their offer and then give it back to them. Or you can draw up your entire separate own document as a disclaimer itself using the information that they provide you on that form as a draft, point by point, each point and every point. And then you have your own document of disclaimer. So it's important to understand the words they're using by, by getting those forms and then do, do it using that form word by word to define it and then changing each word that you need to according to your own purpose. So if you're going to um, use it as a total disclaimer to just disclaim the, the entire account and not have any benefit whatsoever, you can do that. If you want to use it as a disclaimer to still be able to access the benefits that you've already paid in for, then you can do that. And that's why you have to be careful with your wording, because if you word it wrong and do it as a, some kind of full disclaimer, they will take it as a full disclaimer and then not give you any of your benefits. So make sure you do this stuff right. And that's why I say you pay attention to the words and understand what you're doing. So when it says Federal Insurance Contributions Act, tax, they're standing there running their mouth like uh, uh, any, anybody else that babbles when they run, uh, say shit like uh, sovereign citizen. Oxymoral. You cannot both be sovereign and a citizen at the same time. So you cannot make a contribution and pay a tax out of the same element. It either belongs to Caesar or it doesn't. <laughs> A citizen. What's up, brother Andy? Hi, brother. A citizen is a civilian, and if you're a civilian, you're of the militant state, and you're a militant combatant state. So, a civilian, right. an occupier, any of these words other than that of man, we don't take on the role unless there's just and fair compensation for taking on that title. Exactly, and that's what they're doing. The uh... Uh, when, when you do the uh, Social Security count, you're, you're signing up as a United States citizen. Into the corporation, and that's by the, the way. government employee. Yeah. That's the government employee. Corporation to corporate. You're in the, you're in the persona of a corporate body or a body corporate, an entity of fiction, business to business. Mm -hmm. Right, instead of man to man. It's not the private jurisdiction of man equity, you know, divine. Right divine law consciousness you know it's uh, that that is written by the hand of man for fine and forfeiture and profiteering by the capitalists yeah but uh just so everybody understands you know because i got i got in a uh, conversation um with a guy he's a bondsman and evidently he doesn't know what these laws are <laughs> and how they work Evidently, and we are all bondsman, bond, we are we are all bondsmen of Christ. Exactly, and that's what bondsmen. that's the point I was getting to. If you're going to be a bondsman, you better know what that word bond means, because if you don't know that bond means to know, they they then will commit you're... bondage upon your person, personage, barratry, bondage. Yep, and so when you go around. Um, supplying bond documents for people that are that are committing fraud and you're the one providing the document um uh you're involved in that fraud it's, you know whether knowingly or wittingly or not it makes no difference you're still guilty ignorance is no defense exactly and so you know i'm trying to help this guy understand that what he's doing you know if he did it a different way and that is with knowledge so that when he looked over these bonds, he could tell for himself, he could discern for himself whether they were actually bringing a valid bond work or bond order for him, then he would know. But he, he doesn't know that end. He just knows what a bond looks like and he knows he's supposed to sign here. 
Okay. So when it, when it comes down to the true knowledge of what you're doing and the enforcements behind it, that's, that's the crime. Absolutely. Not knowing that you're harming other people just because you don't know you're not, you're, you're harming other people. When that fact is brought about, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you just stick to your job because that's all you know, because you're just doing your job. You're supposed to have that bond um, in, in, in reality between each other to have that compassion to know that if you're hurting, if your actions are hurting somebody, no matter how well intended they are, you must stop. Do no harm. Absolutely. That's the it's law. universal law. Like that. Exactly. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do is trying to help this guy understand that, you know, if you, if you don't understand the bonds themselves, then how can you go around flipping them out and, and just willy nilly, you know, having people sign for them. Mm -hmm. You're part of the problem. So on into so, acquiescence and belligerence thinking that it's proper. And, and, and yep. the, the signature is the most valuable thing that man can behold. It's worth thousands and probably not millions of pounds and dollars. It's your valuable consideration. It's your valuable asset. You know, it's equitable asset. Right. It's your security. Exactly. And, and it's your own private security. You give it away. It, exactly. Otherwise, you're all right. man autographs. The, 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 the signature yep. for commercial realm is for the person. So know what you are and know what you're doing. Right. And, and, t and in today's commercial world, when we think about securities, I want everybody to understand the security is what holds value now and is transferred um, from from body to body in, in, in an intangible sense, because in it's moment. still no matter what happens, the security is still nothing but a ledger. That's right. Your security, all the property that you've inherited from the past and are going to pass on to your future heirs and heiresses. Mm -hmm. That's your security. In today's commercial world, there is no such tangible security like that. Everything is all fictional and just on ledgers. Because there's nothing, there's no substance back in the, the currency. There's no gold since 1931 when they removed right. it. And this is, and this is one and th and this is one of the important things about those securities. You know, I, I try to help people understand this. Benjamin Franklin used to print his own money. And the way he did it was he, he each, each um, print that he made, if it had $10 on it, was equal to $10 worth of gold mm -hmm. or like substance. Yeah. So if he had um, all of his property in his trust and it was supposedly appraised at a value of um, – three and a half million dollars and he gave some guy uh, um, two thousand three hundred dollars of his bills and his and he came that guy came back to him with those that uh, those bills and wanted twenty three hundred dollars worth of property Benjamin Franklin would have to provide him with that property intrinsic that, value. that value intrinsic right value. that exactly intrinsic that. value yes now it's all today you can't now. do that it's all, it's all a promise to pay now you can't you, you can't discharge yep. a debt with another debt. So these these notes that we all see, tens, fifteen, twenty, fifty dollar notes, they're all just debt notes that have no backing or substance to them. They're a belief system. Yeah. And and that's the, what we need to get back the to. The governments is, today are deriving their own money. Yeah, they license the governments today to print their own money, but they don't. So they still borrow it from the banks with the interest rates, and that's why man is enslaved through the birth certificate to pay it back through bondage. And that's why they create the war so they can tax the person to pay for the perpetual killing around the globe or across the plane, whatever you live on. But this is what it is right yep. here. And taxes are paid through acquiescence. Yep. And we should be filling the forms, if you are going to fill the forms, in NA. And it's not non-applicable. It's non-admissible. Right. In other words, it's none of your not, damn yeah, Right, not admissible. So... If I come and cut your grass for you tomorrow, Keith, and you pay me a chicken and a 20, you know, pound of potatoes, how on earth can they take a percentage of this? Man, they don't trade levy and barter right there. So it's all through exactly. acquiescence and it's all through, you know, indoctrination and cognitive dissonance that, that, that man's paying tax is thinking that he's a person, a body corporate entity. Yeah. yeah. And Charlie Oaks, we can print our own money. It's just a matter of the knowledge of learning how to do that again. Like I said, Benjamin Franklin used to print his own money. He wasn't the only one. Um, 
I believe it, it's referred to today as certificates of deposit. In other words, you've got property deposited in a trust and you can give somebody a certificate on that deposit as a promissory note telling them that you promise to pay them so much value on an intrinsic basis. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's basically the, the way you do it is again, your own bond, you know, your own word in beginning was word. And the word is all you honor. have to you, do is you, know you what you're is your bond. About. That, that, that's it. It's, you know, that, that's where it's at. If, if man doesn't take your word as your bond and he requires you to, to sign something, then, then he plainly doesn't trust you. And then in that instance, you must think to yourself, do I wish to continue contract joinder and do business in this realm where I'm not trusted? Right, exactly. And that's and see, that's the one thing that they're they're afraid of the most is the man being able to come back together and being able to make his own deal with each other instead mm -hmm. of having to use that third party representative. Mm -hmm. You know, when man is able to get back to being able to being honest enough to step up to his duties and, and, and detriments in a uh, contract, then, you know, that's, that's why we have these third party interveners uh, upholding each other to contract because mm -hmm. people aren't doing that. They're officious you know? intermeddlers. That's what they are, brother. Yep. Yep. Officious intermeddlers um, maliciously prosecuting by vexation of legal process. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, they are. They are using the force of law to break the common law, natural law, jurisdiction. Like you, you, you well, code, you, like I said, your codes and things, you know, your acts and your statutes. <laughs> the common law <laughs> is a matter of process. And the the uh, the uh, statute codes, rules, and regulations that they're using today, <coughs> along with the threats, threats, and coercion, is what breaks us from that process. It's what instills the fear that keeps us from going forward in the common way. So common understand that. That's your common law. Well, that's right. They're using admiralty commerce law to break common law. Exactly. That's exactly what they're doing. It's admiralty. It's canon. It's ecclesiastical. It's maritime. It's all water law. It's all canonized, cabalized, and papabalized. If, if, if you know you want to get down to it, it's a legalese of language. It's separate to the society of that which we are in. Yeah. And basically what, it, what happens is when they present a contract with you, um, they pretty much already have you on the ship. And the more they can distract you through that process, the farther out to sea they're going. That's what it is. And what you have to basically do is press, uh, procedurally get them back to shore so you can step on dry you land and present the common law. Back from the citizenship and you take back the partnership and you jump off of the dictatorship and you put yourself on land as a man away from anything to do with ship and you put yourself clean and dry and uh, show the man that the clean hands and the clean heart and the equitable asset and all shall, good shall prevail. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> well, anyway, guys, um, just wanted to hop on and explain the uh, Social Security and the FICA thing. You know, that's what's got you classified as a medical uh, Medicare qualified government employee, and that's where your jurisdictional problems are stemming from to begin award, with. Yes, you're, you're award actually of an the employee. State. Yeah, you're you're all considered a, a ward of the state as Absolutely. a volunteer uh, employee. The government has assumed a, a husbandry role over each and every man, and until you rebut the yes. assumption and presumption that they are that of a juvenile delinquent, then you must come to the age of maturity and tell them who they are, correct their relationship, correct their trust capacity, and man shall stand strong in his own stead. Right, and I and I believe I found the uh, the thing, uh, Canon Law um, 2057, I believe, talks about that birth certificate set a K trust, and if you demand that it be collapsed, then they have to collapse it automatically. Absolutely, and because so, a man knows his rights. A man without rights doesn't know his rights. It's just, that's how it goes, isn't it? You know, but 
well, once you've established that you know whom they are and you can collapse that trust at any, any minute you wish, you can put the Vatican on notice, you can do all sorts of things, whatever you feel is best for you or in your yeah. life. But yes, absolutely you can. Or you can use it, you can use the person to your advantage and for your benefit, like it's their set up to do for, for man to benefit from. Right, right. And that's the social part of it. Absolutely. You know, that's that's the social benefit the part of that. It's, it's part of the public. The birth certificate person is, is basically, it's, it's instrumentation. It's a banking bond. It's a note. And once you know how to produ produce and present that instrumentation, then you, that, that's how you, you, you crack this. You know, how to present it and when not to present it on the seas of commerce. Right. It's known as a transmitting utility. It's stationary. In other words... It is utilized. It is utilized to transfer, absolutely, or transmit. And it's just stationary. And what they're doing until you move it, it's just stationary. Simple as that. Right, and they're and they're just using it as a transmitting utility to transfer funds. Absolutely. And and, and, and no people funds are IMF funds, International Monetary Funds. And this is why every program out there. And all yeah, go ahead. Utility bills are settled through the bond, and when they're asking man for cash to settle these utility bills, they're double dipping the books. They're to be discharged and offset with the pen, not to be given the sweat. Exactly. They just let them level the books with your signature. This is what man needs to be taught. Exactly, and that's I, I did a video on that a while back on the qualified signature. And the qualified signature is just your re retention of rights and then your signature yes. on anything you sign. Yes, on your thumbprint, on your, on, on your stamp. Make sure you use your stamp yep. for, for the signification of a live man right there. Yep. So anyway, that's about all I got. You got anything you want to you throw in here, uh, Andy? Oh, there's, there's much I could throw in there, brother. We could keep talking the realm, the jurisdiction, the jurisprudence, and uh, all sorts for a long time. Yeah. That there's 2,000 how many acts and statutes to speak of that you could go through in the in the UCC and all sorts of rules and legislative ways. Yeah, we'd be on here for fucking weeks. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you, you know this. Yeah, we're just uh, peace and love and all. Keep a positive vibration. Keep a heart resonance, and and don't let the the pessimistic negative mind overrule the passion of the positive heart. How's that? Yeah, yeah, sounds good, brother. In the meantime. If it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. Love y'all. Have a great day, people. Back at you, brother. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Bye, man. Love you.